So they're at it again. Soapers are getting froggy on all of the forums again. And that is actually the reason why I am making today's soap. But before I talk to you about today's soap, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And again, I really do mean all the soapy things. And uh, you are here for day 149, and we are making a melt and pour base from scratch. Now, I'm doing this for two reasons. One reason is there are so many just fights that happen on soap forums, like it's ridiculous but one of the things that they like to fight about the most it seems is a uh, melt and pour versus cold process and or hot process to that and how melt and pour is like the bastard stepchild of the whole trinity and like it's not real soap and uh no we're gonna we're gonna stop doing that we're gonna stop treating melt and pour soap makers like you know, lesser citizens, because that's mean and wrong and not fun. And so I thought it would be fun to make a melt and pour base from scratch and show you all how it's done. Now, this is something that many melt and pour soap makers do. So essentially they are doing a hot process, you know, batch of soap that can then be cut down and, uh, you know, scented and colored and done the things with to turn it into a different type of soap. And not only do a lot of melt and pour soap makers do this, so they are legitimately making a hot process version of this, big companies do this. I recently found out that Lush apparently does this for the majority of their soaps. They use a melt and pour base that they've made. So we are going to do one of my favorite melt and pour bases today. It's a triple butter blend. It has a cocoa butter, shea butter, and mango butter in it all great things and you're going to see how melt and pour is created and you're going to have some fun and you're going to learn some stuff or maybe you'll get mad at me. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. So this video is deceivingly short because it takes so long to actually make a melt and pour base and I'm going to give you the thing right now. We're going to start with the coconut oil and five ounces of coconut oil goes into this batch. This is a total batch weight of around 40 ounces. And so honestly not even enough for me to make like one batch of soap or a half of that what whatever. But this is a nice easy recipe for you to start out with and see if you, you know, like it. And then also it goes into this is two ounces of mango butter. I really love mango butter in this. It's a dry butter, but it's also going to be, you know, lend to the moisturizing properties. And then we're also going to put in two ounces of shea, which also moisture, good, nice creamy lather, and two ounces of cocoa butter. And we will also be putting in 0.25 ounces of candelia wax. You can also sub out beeswax for this, no problem. There's no issue whatsoever. The soy, if you were to substitute soy, you could do that too. You'd need to change the lye calculations a bit. Now, also what goes into this is three, four, five total ounces of oils. And so in this is olive oil and castor oil to, you know, nice gentle cleansing, castor oil, nice big bubble. So that is what we are doing for this. All of this needs to melt down along with, oh, I can't forget my secret, my secret part. 
So uh, kaolin clay. I put four tablespoons of kaolin clay into my uh, into this a batch this size for a melt and pour soap base. So just imagine how much more you need if you're making like a proper sized recipe. But anyway, this is going to melt down and then we'll be ready for the lye solution addition thing. And once this is all melted and everything has, you know, just like that, looks awesome and the kaolin clay is what's making it look, you know, white. And so this is for a white soap base. Um, for a clear soap base, you would need to use propylene glycol and I'm not doing a clear soap base today, I'm doing a white because I need white. So I put in 6.2 ounces of aloe vera and to that I am going to add, oh, I don't know how much. The scale is going to tell me in just a second. Let's see. 2.26 ounces of lye. That is what you need for this particular batch. And we're going to mix it up and dissolve the lye into the aloe. So this would be a 100% uh, water substitution for the aloe. So if you didn't want to use aloe, you could totally use just distilled water in its place. Same amount and it's completely fine. I love putting aloe and the three different butters into a soap recipe though for melt and pour because I have found that it really helps with the hydration of the skin because glycerin soaps can be a little bit interesting in that they are a humectant. So that's hitting at 202 and that's hitting at 176, both hot, super hot. But that's okay because, you know, hot process is by definition hot. But yeah, again, um, melt and pour glycerin soaps, because of the extra glycerin, they're very interesting in that, yeah, in, on you know face value, they're moisturizing. But also what glycerin does is it can pull moisture from your skin to sort of like normalize the area, the air around your, it's very interesting. So glycerin can be drying um, for, for some people. So I really like the addition of the aloe as well as the three butters because this makes a really balanced bar that all skin types can use. Now, normally I say like with a store-bought brand of you know glycerin soaps, um, you should use that for oily skin types, really, because it sort of helps balance their acid mantle and do the thing. But this one, legitimately all skin types can use it. So for that reason, it's absolutely glorious. Now, I have had nothing but issues with this mix. And uh, what we are doing is, normally people like mix their hot process to trace, right? And I already hit trace, like that already happened. I like to go a step further. I don't like waiting for the Vaseline stage and doing all the things with like that you normally do with hot process. We've done a hot process recipe before, a couple of them, and so I can link them and you can see like the quote unquote right way to do it. But since this is a glycerin soap, which means we're going to be adding a boatload of glycerin to it, I like to just continue mixing it until everything starts getting really weird looking. And so you'll see separation, you'll see all this really, these really strange things happening. And that's when I stop. That's when I know that I have not only mixed it past, you know, trace, I have also mis mixed it past the cook. And so what I have to wait for at that point is just it turning into a thick, pasty mess of crap but you see how it's separating there like normally like that would suggest problems but I I, I don't know if you want to wait for the Vaseline stage you can totally do that so you can like just wait and get it to trace and um, then put the lid on it and you know cook it for around 30 45 minutes or whatever and the edges will start to look like you know Vaseline again look at the other hot process recipes on the channel or sort of whatever, but I don't do that. I mix it, I, I continue to mix the crap out of it essentially till it gets to this weird thing and it thinks you think it's not gonna work and everything's gonna be terrible and it's a failed batch, but it's not. It, it, it works out really well. And I do that to actually speed the cook time because two hours into this, like this is a two hour thing when it's all said and done. And if I can cut down any of that, I super do. And so doing it this way actually eliminates a 30 minute cook from the process. So it only becomes about a one and a half hour long endeavor, really from cradle to grave, which is awesome. And we're gonna put the lid on it and let it cook up for about 10 minutes and then check it. OK, 
Okay, so this is after 10 minutes and you see there's separation of the oils and everything going on here. Super weird, right? I just take the stick blender back to it and continue beating it into submission because that's, you know, whatever. Again, I'm going for, I want the whole cook process to be done because I know it's a glycerin soap. I know I'm not de dealing with anything like fancy with swirls or whatever in this. I know it's a, a base that is meant to be, you know, cut down and remelted and, you know, things added. And the death of my stick blender. <laughs> This is my most favorite stick blender on the planet, like on the planet. I've had many, many stick blenders die. That one has been going strong for five years and no problems whatsoever. And so the death of a second stick blender, this is not a good day for me and blending. And it never is for hot process. I'm actually more concerned about my other stick blender though, because I believe that is the best uh, blender to use for soap making like this one here it has the weird edges on the you know head it it sucks it's not fun but i'm gonna give it the old college try with this broken thing just hold it on while i do the mixy mix to get through this because now i have sacrificed two stick blenders to this cause and that's not great again the bellas they suck they break all the time i use them for classes because i know they will break all the time and they're very very cheap so it's okay but I need another I need another silver silver bullet I'm sad about that one but you see this consistency it's all worked out really well it's not grainy anymore there's no separation going on it mean that means that there's only like 10 more minutes left in the cook before I can then add the glycerin and you know do the thing and so this is five minutes after I have done the mixy mix and broken two st stick blenders and it's getting thick, you see that? It is turning into a really a thick paste thing. And so that tells me I only need a few more minutes to get that to where it needs to be. So it's all fully cooked out. The lye has done its thing. Saponification is doing its, you know, has done its thing. And we're ready to add, you know, the next piece, which is the glycerin. And so again, this cooks out for another five minutes and it gets very thick. It's You see the thing on the, um, the spatula there, how thick that soap is getting, but that's, that's the sign that it's ready to get the glycerin added to it. Now for this, I am adding uh, 13 ounces of glycerin. Now I add 13 ounces of glycerin because I'm in a very humid environment and I don't like it when my glycerin soaps sweat. So I use a little bit less. You can go up to 17 ounces with the glycerin for this particular recipe and have you know a delightful soap that won't have any problems whatsoever so now it's time to add this to the pot and let all of that thick soap paste melt down into the glycerin now with this process the total cook time once you get the glycerin in is oh about 40 minutes or so so kind of a lot, which is why I recommend actually doing big batches of um, glycerin soap whenever you make your own melt and pour base. Now, making your own melt and pour base, as you can see, huge time suck. So you have made a hot process soap just so you can then take it and melt it down again, which is, that's, that's hardcore, that, that's amazing. And so, you know, going back to, well, all of the crap that I always see on all of the different, you know, forums and Facebook pages and all the things about cold process soap makers belittling melt and pour soap makers. A, I recently found out that Lush uses nothing but melt and pour for their soaps. Nothing but melt and pour for their soaps. That is what they use. So there's that. They make their own base, but nothing but melt and pour. Two, look at all the bubbles, that was really cool. Two, um, if you're making your own soap base, this is this is hardcore. This is like you're hugely invested into your product because this is two hours of my life that I will never get back, only to have a soap that has the appropriate you know structure to allow it to be melted down and changed and re-solidify into 
a soap that yields a big lather and doesn't do weird things to your skin and cleanses you nicely. Yep, it's all a thing. So cold process soap makers need to uh, need to stop because hot process is hot process is stupid. And anybody who has the patience or enjoys it, my hat goes off to you because this is such a long process. And um, yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this in the mold to firm up and that really just takes a couple hours. So after this is firm, we will test the lather and the meltability and you know, the doing of all the things. But you know, we're gonna spritz it down with you know, rubbing alcohol because that's what we do for everything really. And look, it's already firming up, it's good to go. Let's go uh, check out the test. Okay, time to test this bad boy. So this is the finished product. It is firmed up. It is nice and white. It's a beautiful white. That is the Kaylin Clay that's doing its job there. So well done, Kaylin Clay. And we're gonna cut it and see. Oh, it cuts like mountain pour. Nice soft cut, like a semi-firm cheese. It's awesome. And now I'm going to cut it up and put it in the beaker and I will put the beaker into the up the microwave and melt it down and then I'll put that box in another box and set it to myself and smash it with a hemp. Never mind. Emperor's new groove. That's anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna melt this down and um you know make sure that it's melty. And while it is melty, we are going to cut off another chunk and test this because you know regardless of whether or not we melt it down again, it needs to have good performance as a soap goes. And yeah, my hands are super oily right now, but look how beautiful right off the bat. That's such a cute little lather. It's very moisturizing. It's very cleansing. Nice, tiny, tight bubbles. And the lather is so good. It's such an enjoyable bar to use. And so, yeah, it's a that's a good recipe. That's, that's the butters. That's the clay. That's the thing. And that's the melted version of it. Isn't that cool? Look, it melted down. Have you ever tried to do that with cold process? I should have tried this for this just to see... Just to show you what happens. You should try it. Just go try to melt your, your cold process. It'll be fun. And uh, this is going to set up in the mold and we will make sure that it's, you know, it, it does what it's meant to do. And again, spritz with the alcohol to make all the bubbles go away because that's important. And it will set up for about 20 minutes or so. I find that it takes a little bit longer with the handmade melt and pork bases to set up than with the, um, a purchased basis really but when it does set up look at that it is perfect so that is a uh, melt and pour soap base from scratch my friends and it's completely delightful it is a lot of fun and that is your day 149 melt and pour base from scratch see it's real soap and it actually is really a bigger pain in the ass than making you know a regular batch of cold process soap for me because the entire process with the cook and the glycerin cook and all the it's like two hours of my life and my cold process batches never take that long like it doesn't matter how many soaps I have to make at the same time if I'm making like 300 of the same bar of soap it still takes me under an hour and this was two hours in just to show you this one little block of Soap. So, I mean, my hat goes off to people who make their own glycerin bases and primarily use mountain pour soap. Good for you, honestly. Let's keep doing it. Keep, you know, up on your game and doing your thing because you're rocking at life. Cold process soap makers, you're also rocking, rocking at life. Hot process soap makers, you're also rocking at life. Let's just stop being mean to each other. That could be fun. Uh, yeah, so if you are interested in any mountain pour soaps, I have a couple on the website. When I do mountain pour, I, you know, make the thing and then I do the, yeah. So I have a few on the site. I think I showed you the mint to be at the very beginning of the channel. So that would be a good one to check out if you are interested in that. If you are interested in more soapy antics and you know, when I may or may not get froggy, subscribe to the channel because I do this. I. Yeah, it's my thing. So uh, yeah, you should be around for when I decide to do this, really. Um, and for those of you who have been around for when I get froggy, thank you for still being around afterwards. I really appreciate it. And I am done for the day and I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.